Hello, Elizabeth here, and today I'm going to show you how to make a rhinestone hat. Honestly, it's a little small for my gigantic head. It doesn't really fit, but I didn't make it for me. I made it for you. I'm going to walk you through everything step by step. I started with this plain pink baseball cap. For this project, I'm using Crystal AB rhinestones in the size SS20. I'm applying the stones with E6000 glue. It's industrial strength and great for applying stones to clothing items and shoes. It is toxic and the fumes are harmful and will irritate your skin. So always use caution with this glue and make sure you're in a well-ventilated area. I find it easiest to spread this glue with a plastic cuticle pusher stick. I use a wax pencil that can be sharpened to pick up and place my rhinestones. There are links to the products I'm using in the description of this video. The first step in almost any rhinestone project is to outline the edges of the item. This will give the finished product a nice tidy perimeter. With an item this shape, your stones won't all fit together perfectly and you'll need to leave some small spaces between some of the stones. But you want to avoid doing that in the perimeter. If there are imperfections in the outer edge, the whole product will look messy. So make sure you do the entire outline of the brim before filling in the inside space. Once the outline is done, I like to move on to the narrow corners where the brim meets the hat and work my way in. If you were using multiple sizes of stones, your smallest ones will fit into that crack nicely. But I'm just using one today, so I'm doing my best to fill in the space as tightly and neatly as possible without lifting any edges of the stones. Sometimes when you're filling in a narrow space, you can end up shoving the stone into a spot it doesn't quite fit and the edge of the stone may get lifted and sit on top of another stone. You always want the full flat back of the stone to be lying flat on the surface you're rhinestoning. If it's lifted, it won't look right because the stone will be on an angle and it will also pop off easily because there isn't a complete glue bond on the entire surface. Leaving a little gap of space is always better than having lifted edges. Once I had my corners filled in, I started working across the brim from side to side, following the curve of the outline I made at the start. I did a bit of a honeycomb pattern here where the stones in each row sit in the spaces between the stones in the previous row. Because of the shape of the hat, a honeycomb pattern will not be a perfect fit to fill the space flawlessly like it is on a straight tumbler. But you can leave a little bit more space between them as you work down the brim and the surface area starts to expand. Try not to leave any gigantic gaps and keep your spacing as consistent as possible. E6000 dries pretty quickly, so I like to work in small sections at a time, taking a bead of glue on the edge of the cuticle stick and spreading it out in a small area. If you need to remove a stone for any reason, you should still be able to pry it off pretty easily if it hasn't been too long. But once it has cured for the full 24 to 48 hours, it is super strong and removing the stones will be very difficult. In my experience with this glue, it is very durable and totally waterproof, and it should hold up no problem if you get caught in the rain with your hat on. And here is the final result. If you're feeling ambitious, you could totally apply more stones on that front section of the hat as well for a mega sparkly baseball cap. But keep in mind that the glue will likely stiffen up the fabric and it may change the way the hat fits. So just be careful depending on the type of material your hat is made of. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel and leave a comment letting me know what you would like to see next. See you later.